of all, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem at all. This is actually like one of the most requested videos on my channel right now, so. All right, well, let's just jump right into it. Um, first, I think a lot of people are curious about your relationship with the team at Fly PPG. Can you give us some details on that? Yeah, uh, it's pretty simple, actually. Um, when I went, uh, last year when I sold my Scout, and I sold my Scout just because it had, you know, accumulated like just over 100 hours on it, and I like to sell my gear when it gets about that point, it starts to lose its value. Um, but when I went to go sell the Scout, um, I put it up for sale on one of the Paramotor uh, PPG for sale pages. The guys at Fly PPG saw that. Uh, they reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in flying an Adventure Pluma. And they would give me a discount on gear in exchange for working with them on marketing activities, things like that. Yeah, so I asked them, you know, what would that entail? And they basically said, just keep doing everything you're doing. Keep making YouTube videos, keep flying. Uh, you don't got to change anything. Just uh, work with us on marketing stuff. So like gear giveaways, um, gear reviews. Uh, we did a training giveaway, things like that. So it's a pretty simple deal. Uh, yeah, initially I was a little bit concerned, right? Because first of all, I had never flown a Pluma before, an Adventure Pluma. So there's a chance, right, that these guys would give me a discount on gear, send me all this gear, and then I don't end up liking it. So I was pretty concerned about that in the beginning. Yeah, and then another concern was that, you know, I have a full-time job. Um, I got wife, kids, you know, family, stuff like that going on and my video upload cadence is kind of erratic, right? So I don't, I don't like upload on a consistent basis, like once a week or something like that. Um, I try to keep it up to date, but occasionally I'll go like, you know, one, two, maybe even three months without uploading a video because, you know, I'll be traveling for work or stuff will be going on with the family. So, you know, there's, you know, I explain that to them and let them know all my concerns. And my last concern was that, you know, I told them it's important for me to be honest on my channel. So if you guys send me gear and I don't like it, I'm gonna have to be honest about that and say why I don't like it on the channel. Um, so I laid all these concerns out to them and they were cool with it and here we are. So yeah, just uh, first of all, tell us about the paramotor. Yeah, so I fly an Adventure Pluma with a Moster 185 MY20 dual start on it. Um, got a few upgrades on it. I've upgraded to the carbon fiber hoop and I've got like a carbon fiber air box and a carbon fiber prop hub on it. Um, but that's all like aesthetic really, it just looks cool. Um, and I like took all the stickers off of it just to give it that like blacked out carbon fiber look. But other than that, it's pretty much stock. I'm running a standard 130 centimeter uh, E-prop two blade. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so let's start with what you like about the uh, Adventure Pluma. Yeah, so just to get out of the way, I like the paramotor. So overall, I'm really happy with the Pluma. Um, no, no major complaints, just nitpicky things. So I did look out with, uh, with that part of it and I did end up liking the paramotor. Yeah, so the first thing I like about it is the looks, right? So it's got that all carbon fiber look. The frame is carbon fiber, the hoop, the spars. My entire paramotor is carbon fiber and I love that look. I think carbon fiber is sexy, it looks sleek. Um, so I really like the way that the, uh, the Pluma looks and it's got that um, you know, red and black harness. I, I just think it's a sexy looking paramotor. Uh, the only thing actually that I didn't like about the Pluma was the uh, spar connection pieces that connect the spar to the hoop. Um, originally they were like this like curved like piece, like a 90 degree curve. Um, and I thought that looked kind of funny from the side and just, it wasn't an attractive look. And it actually, uh, I saw people get like the risers stuck up on it sometimes when they were launching. I think that was more to do with the form of their launch than anything, but um, regardless, it could happen. So I didn't like the way that looked, but um, the guys at Adventure actually redesigned that and they kind of made it more of a sharp angle, like an angled piece. Um, the guys at FlyPPG sent that out to me and it looks awesome and it's a little bit more functional because you can no longer get your risers stuck. Yeah, so the next thing is that it's it's a comfortable paramotor. So um, the harness is really comfortable. I forget the name or the brand of the harness. I'll overlay it here, but it's their comfort version of that harness. No complaints about that. Um, and. It's, uh, it's fine walking around on the ground. I can hike with it. I've you know, walked around with it a little bit here and there and launching, it's, it's perfectly comfortable. Uh, weight, so the actual frame itself, again, it's all carbon fiber. So the frame itself is really light. I think it's like 2.6 kilograms, something like that. Uh, never weighed just the frame itself. But once you add a motor and fuel and with the dual start, it's got the, uh, the motor and the battery on there. And then you add tools to it. So any paramotor with the, the most 85 dual start uh, configuration, uh, they, they, you know, they start adding up in weight. I think mine, I weighed it 
with three quarter tank of fuel in it and full like flight configuration, it was 76 pounds. So weight is not all that important to me unless you get really heavy, but I mean, 76 pounds, it doesn't feel bad. Like, you know, like I mentioned, it's comfortable on the ground. So the harness is comfy. It sits high enough off uh, on my back, uh, which is kind of important to me because I'm only five foot six and I only weigh 148 pounds. So it's important that the paramotor, you know, sits comfortably on my back. It's like, you know, the motor's close to my back. It doesn't hit me in the back of the legs or anything like that. So I have no problem launching. Um, I can walk around with the motor comfortably for, you know, a decent amount of time. So I have no complaints there. It's a comfortable paramotor. Uh, in the air, yeah, it's, it flies great. Um, the one thing I like about it is the weight shift it has. So it's got, it's got the option for um, so your standard weight shift, which is one arm locked, one arm unlocked. You can uh, unlock both arms and engage a 3D weight shift. Um, and I made a whole video on that and I'll link that above. So you've got a lot of um, lot of options when it comes to weight shift on this paramotor. Um, but even in the standard configuration with one arm unlocked and one arm locked, which is how you get it from Adventure, um, I, I, I like that weight shift. It works fine for me. Um, I put it a little bit over the Scout in terms of weight shift capability, but still under the SkyTap Angel, which in my opinion has the most uh, weight shift of any paramotor on the market. So weight shift, I like it on the Pluma. Uh, some other things I like about it, the most 185 with the E-Start. I love having E-Start. Um, probably never own a paramotor again without it. I think I've manually started my paramotor two times and both times was just to see if it worked. Um, but yeah, I always, I'm always E-Starting my paramotor. Um, I think I've charged the battery like two or three times since I've owned the thing in like 50 plus hours. So super convenient. I love that. Um, the ease of assembly. Um, it's an easy paramotor to tear down and set back up. Now the cage comes apart and, uh, you know, fairly simply. Uh, all the spars just slide right out. It all folds up into a little carrying case that they give you. And I think it takes me like 15 or 20 minutes to assemble the whole paramotor. So it's super convenient. Another thing I like about it, it's got this like engine access port. So the harness just unclips and folds forward. And then this is like Kevlar plate with uh, some like cushion over it. And that just peels forward off some Velcro and you can access the motor. You can get right to the starter. You can get to the uh, weight shift bolt arm or arm bolts, the weight shift arm bolts. You can get to different parts of the motor. So it's super convenient. It's nice, nice feature of the paramotor. Uh, next, it's a durable paramotor and it's easy to fix if you do break something. So I've only busted something one time, excluding propellers, but I've only busted something one time and that was uh, a butt landing. So I was test flying a buddy's wing. It was like a sky flux and it was like, I was really lightly loaded on it and the brakes were long. So long story short, I came in for a landing and um, I pulled for full flare and I just had no authority and came in on my butt and um, kind of fell straight down and busted a cage piece. So um, it's an easy fix. The cage pieces, just the outer portion of the net just like unties. So you can untie that, take that one cage piece out because it's modular, put the new cage piece in and then retie it. I think the whole fix took me 10 minutes. So it was super, super convenient. And the cage pieces are not uh, really all that expensive. The carbon fiber ones are more expensive than the aluminum ones, but they're both cheaper than replacing a like a scout cage piece. Those are like, I think 160 bucks and then you gotta um, unrivet them all. So it's a more labor intensive process. So I like the ease of replacement on the Pluma. Yeah, and other than that, um, yeah, I like, the, I like the side mount reserve. Uh, that's convenient. The only bummer there is you lose a pocket, which is not all that big of a deal. I'm able to fit everything I need in one pocket, but having that side mount reserve and not have to worry about the front mount is really nice. Um, and I've also got it set up with like a D ring attachment so that um, I can just unzip the side mount if I, you know, I'm going to be traveling for a long distance and I think I might hit rain. I can unzip that, uh, that reserve and just, you know, I only have the D ring finger tight, loosen it. And then I can put that, you know, in the in the cab of the truck and not have to worry about it. So I think the side mount is a, a good solution. I like having it there. Okay, what about dislikes? Anything you don't like about it? Yeah, so dislikes about the paramotor. Again, nothing major here. These are all just like areas of improvement that I like to see improved upon in like future generations of the Pluma. So the first thing is that the carbon fiber cage pieces. So when you upgrade to the carbon fiber cage or hoop rather, um, you the, there's like a gap left between the hoop sections and where they mount to the spars. And right now Adventure doesn't offer like an extra piece for that to make it seamless. They don't offer like a piece that's specific to the carbon fiber cage. Um, the profile, the side profile of the carbon fiber hoops versus the aluminum ones is a little bit different and it leaves you with this gap. So it's like an eyesore in my opinion. And I think that if you're paying to upgrade to the carbon fiber hoop, I would 
I would like to see them offer you, you know, the, 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 the rest of the bit basically. So I'd like to see them offer you the pieces to make that a flush mount. Um, it's not like a line snag hazard or anything. I've never had a line snagged on it, but it's just a little bit of an eyesore. I'd like to see that improved. The next thing I'd like to see improved would be the, uh, the crossbar for the pull starter. So where the pull starter actually is, is really convenient. It's right above your shoulder. It's where I think it should be pulled down. You can actually put it over on this side if you like. Um, so left or right shoulder. The issue is that that crossbar is only held in place by the tension of that pull starter. So it's, it connects to the, the spars. And then if you remove that pull starter for any reason, so I removed mine because I was replacing that pulley. Um, mine had broken and I didn't, um, it was broken from the factory and I didn't have the new pulley. I was waiting for it to come in the mail. So I just tied the pull starter off, right? Thinking, okay, I'll tie it off, no big deal, I have e-start. Well, I didn't know that that pull starter, and I made a whole video about this, I'll link it above, but I didn't know that that pull starter holds that cross brace down. So I, long story short, I launched and that cross brace came loose and went through the prop. So in my eyes, that's a design flaw. Um, they should definitely have um, something to hold that cross brace down. Now the fix is easy enough. I've seen guys use shrink wrap like right above it on the spars. It keeps it from just vibrating up. That works. I just put a little piece of uh, um, Gorilla Tape right above it. You, you don't even notice it, but it's such a simple fix that I think that it should just come from the factory like that. Um, and again, they don't recommend you fly with it unhooked, but if that pull starter were ever to break or the spring were to come loose, then that cross brace can come loose and go through your prop. So I'd like to see a little bit of redundancy when it comes to that. The next thing is this swing arm. Like there's like these washers in the front of the uh, weight shift arms. Uh, they're kind of an eyesore. It's like everything's carbon fiber and you have these like silver washers that it, it, just, it just doesn't look great. Um, but they also are a little bit of a snag hazard. So when I was first getting used to the Pluma, um, I would have right handed throttle. I would grab my risers, right? And then come above like this for, for launch. And in doing that motion, my throttle cable would get stuck on that washer. And when I was first getting used to the plume, I didn't notice that. So I'd go to launch and then, you know, your arms would come up and my left arm would come all up. My right one would be stuck because it was stuck on that washer. I would have to abort the launch. But, you know, I've gotten used to that now. So now when I, you know, get ready to launch, I always check and make sure that it's not hooked on that little washer there. But um, I think that there's probably a better solution than a, than a washer. Uh, and I think maybe future generations of the Pluma, it'd be, be nice if they, I don't know, integrated that somehow. Um, and the last thing is uh, torque compensation. So the Pluma uses uh, like a fixed style torque compensation. I prefer dynamic torque compensation. So dynamic is like the Scout has that, the Nirvana um, uses that, the new Mac Fly I think uses it. And basically they use fins on the spars to compensate for torque. Um, and I made a whole video on this and I'll link it above, but basically as the air flows over those fins, um, the resultant force torques the cage in the opposite direction that the motor is torquing you. And that's how it works. And the faster the prop spins, the more torque compensation you get. Um, a lot of frame manufacturers, including the Pluma, use a different style where they either offset your hook end point, like the Maverick or the mini plane uh, frames like that, or the Pluma, which basically has a weight shift, or excuse me, a torque compensation strap right here that you tighten and it just induces a little bit of a weight shift turn um, via your harness. So it works, but I just tend to prefer dynamic torque compensation. I think the best solution would actually be a combination of both of them. So if future generations of the Pluma were to have dynamic torque compensation via um, fins on the spars, plus that torque compensation strap, I think that would be ideal. And finally, this might just be my harness, um, but my torque compensation strap doesn't ever stay set. So I always have to tighten it like after every flight, even during the flight, it'll come loose. So I'll be, I'll be forced you know, weight shift for my torque compensation or use a little bit of brake. So um, I don't know if that's just my harness or what, but it's set up the same way it was when I got it from you know, the factory. So I haven't made any changes to it. I've actually added a zip tie to try to help and it does, but uh, that'd be my only complaint about that. Ah, uh, yeah, the exo throttle. So this is another commonly requested review. Uh, people always ask me, do I, do I like it? So first of all, everyone, tends to like a throttle that they have, I think, or you get used to it eventually. I've had three different throttles um, on, on my pair of motors and I've gotten used to all of them. I didn't particularly like the Vito throttle in the beginning and then ended up getting used to it, preferring it. Um, the Axle throttle was a change, right? It was an adjustment, I had to get used to that. The main thing about the Axle throttle is that the throttle cable comes over your hand instead of under. So it coming over your hand is ergonomically fine. The issue is that when you go to launch, that's where your A's are. 
so you've got two things over your thumbs. So you got to kind of get used to that. And then find, I had to find like a new way to pinch my A's. Not a huge deal, made the adjustment and I'm used to it now. So I will say that it's extremely well built. Um, I've, taken, I've taken it apart. All the components inside seem like they're built, built very well. Um, very happy with the construction of it. It's got cruise control. It's got, you know, a kill switch obviously. And then the e-start is above that. It's like a high effort um, movement. So you're not gonna accidentally hit the e-start. So it's a very well thought out, very ergonomic throttle. It's super comfortable in your hand. Um, the only other um, issue I have with it is that it's got a wrist strap, which in itself is not a bad thing. I like the wrist strap idea because when you have your cruise control set, you can let go of the throttle and the throttle will hang from your wrist, which is super convenient for when you're in the air, if you wanna be doing something on a long XC, like using your phone or something like that. You can just let go of your throttle and it hangs there. The issue is that that strap is like a, a hard strap. It's not stretchy. So first thing I thought when I put that on was, man, if I gotta get out of this, this is one more thing I gotta get out of on this paramotor, especially in like a water landing scenario. So I keep mine a little bit loose so I can shake it off, but um, I'd like to see it be like a stretchy material, like a neoprene material or some, some type of stretchy band in the future. Um, Cause you get the same benefits of being able to let it go and it would just hang there, but in the event that you needed to get out of it in an emergency, you could just rip your hand out and it would come out really easily. So I'd like to see that uh, improved in the future. But overall, I'm used to the extra throttle now. Like I said, it was an adjustment in the beginning, but I'm happy with it now and it's comfy and I like it. So maintenance, um, I'm about just over 50 hours in on the paramotor. I've had no major maintenance items. I've, you know, had to retorque my head, things like that. Um, but that's all standard like maintenance that you're supposed to be doing on the paramotor. Nothing has really broken on it that I've had to fix. I haven't even changed the uh, brass bushing on the exhaust yet, which I'm due for since I'm just at 50 hours. Um, but I've, you know, my motor's running fine, no complaints there. The only small thing that happened with the frame itself was that the Velcro for that back plate, the engine access back plate, um, came unstuck from the, the back. So. It was like, you know, the Velcro is like stuck via some like adhesive to the back. That adhesive kind of softened up and came loose. Uh, I haven't ended up fixing it because the adhesive is still sticky. So I just don't use the Velcro anymore. I use the stickiness of that adhesive. Uh, and I barely move the back plate. It doesn't come loose when I'm flying because it's behind your harness and your back's up against it. So I haven't fixed it. Not a huge inconvenience, but that's literally the only thing that I've had go wrong with it so far. All right, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, oh yeah, what? wanted to ask you, what do you think about Mark Amundsen? Mark Amundsen. Yeah, he's a nice enough guy. Yeah, didn't he like call you out a while back on your subscriber count on YouTube? <laughs> yeah, uh, he like called me out on like a subscriber count challenge or something. He made a video and put it on his YouTube channel. Um, but when he did it, he was already like 150 or 200 subscribers ahead of me when he challenged me. So it's like, all right. <laughs> That doesn't really seem fair. No, it was all right. Uh, I ended up closing the gap without too much effort, and we're like neck and neck right now as far as subscribers, and I haven't even really been trying, so, you know. No, I never really brought it back up. You know, I'm not trying to rub it in his face. Um, he, he's trying the best he can right now, so. All right, man, well, thanks again. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Dude, I have seriously had to restart my phone like 10 times already. This is getting really annoying. Hey, audio sync. I'm filming this all on my cell phone right now because my nice Canon 70D that I used to film YouTube videos with, I actually gave that away. I love the E-Star. Uh, I had like an opportunity to make someone like super happy, so I just gave that camera to them. I have to record the whole thing again. <sighs> And um, I haven't bought a new camera since then. You gotta be f***ing kidding me! And so I've been filming on my cell phone. I'm losing my shit, man. And the camera app on my cell phone keeps freezing and it's freaking pissing me off. And I'm all sweaty because I'm annoyed and I gotta finish this video and this is the third time I'm filming it, so. That Velcro came off. Get pissed off. It's not like... You mother